Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3, but probably not the Crusader Kings 3 that you were expecting, because today we're having a little break from the lovely people dynasty, and we are going to take a look at the fancy new Fate of Iberia flavour pack that's just been made available. So Fate of Iberia introduces many new things, but the main thing is called the Struggle, which is a sort of big event type thing that's playing out over the whole of Iberia, and as you play the game, you can carry out certain actions that contribute to the struggle, and can give you useful bonuses and all that kind of stuff. So we'll take a look at that and there are new events and characters and cultures and perhaps most importantly there are new hats. And I quote from the Steam Store page some of the tallest headgear medieval Europe has to offer. So we'll definitely be taking a look at that. I can't say no to a nice tall hat. And also we'll get to see the new features of the free castle update that everyone who owns Crusader Kings 3 will get. And that adds all sorts of extra bits and bobs. There's a new faction type and some clan contract stuff and lots of other bits and bobs as well. The Fate of Iberia pack is out right now, and we were given a key for it by Paradox, just so we could play it a little bit early to get this video ready for the day it was released, which is very, very kind, so thank you, Paradox. But anyway, let's get on with it, shall we? Let's head over to Iberia, and we shall dive right in. So here we go, and we do have two Iberia start dates to choose from. We've got the Struggle for Iberia, which begins in 867, and we have Iberia in Pieces, which begins in 1066. I think we'll go for the early one. Let's go all the way back to the year 867. It's a vintage year, and we should take part in the Struggle for Iberia. And now we need to pick a character. I mean, we could go in and pick anybody, but I think we'll pick one of the ones offered here. I think, let's go for Ibn Marwan here, the Duke of Badajoz, I think that's pronounced. Medium difficulty, he's got a nice bit of land as well, that's not too shabby at all. But also, crucially, he's got on a very, very nice hat indeed. Look at that, it's kind of got steps going up it, and there's a pointy bit at the top. It's a very good hat. I mean, you know, we'll change that at some point and give him an even better hat if we can find one. But as starter hats go, that is pretty good. So so Ibn Marwan, we shall play as you, please. So here we are. Welcome to the 1st of January, 867 AD, everybody. And that is our bit of the world right there over in Iberia. And you know what? That's not too bad at all. That is quite a big bit of land in comparison to all the other bits of land around us. That is not too shabby at all. So what do we have? It looks like we've got five holdings under our control. It looks like we're controlling all of the counties that we've got our hands on. So we're managing everything. I think that's right. That's the one at the bottom right, that's middle right, that's middle left, that's the top, that's bottom left, and that's the duchy title itself. So we're controlling everything. We're controlling all of our lands directly, which is good for us, because that means we get more money and more levies and all that kind of stuff. Okie doke, right, so we're looking okay in terms of the land we have. Let's take a look at us. So we're looking quite good in terms of our stats. Diplomacy of 10 is okay. A Marshal of 19 is wonderful. That is very nice. Stewardship 10 is sort of okay. Intrigue 13 is pretty good. Learning of 9 is sort of okay. And we have a prowess of 15 at the age of 48. That's very good. So what do we like? We're ambitious, we're cynical, and we're fickle. Okay, but we do have a four-star military education trait, which is wonderful. We're a blade master, we're an overseer, we're an aggressive attacker, and we're quick. That is very, very nice indeed. That is wonderful stuff. Okay, and we are of the Mualadi faith, and we are of the Andalusian culture. Okay, right, so that seems fine. We have a liege. Okay, so we've actually got somebody to yeah, report into. Um, so Sultan Muhammad ibn uh, Abd al-Rahman. Okay, so that's our liege. And there are, oh my goodness me, we've got, we've got many children. Are they all boys? Son, 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 son. Oh my goodness me. Oh dear me. Right, the succession is going to be an absolute nightmare for you. Um, okay, right, so we'll see what we can do with that. Oh dear me, that's going to be all sorts of complicated, isn't it? Um, right, so let's do all the stuff that we have to do when we begin a new character. We've got to do all this kind of stuff. So yeah, a lifestyle, we need to go and do that. Let's have the martial lifestyle, because, you know, that's what he's into. Um, what have we got? So we've got Overseer, so we've gone all the way down here, and it looks like we're going down Strategist, which is good, because that is quite good. I mean, Gallant wouldn't be too bad for this chappy, actually, because Marshal plus two and Prowess plus four, that is not too bad. What does uh, what Strategist get you at the end? Diplomacy plus one, Marshal plus three, Enemy Fatal Casualties, though, plus 25%. That is very good as well. But your Gallant is also pretty good. And yeah, you are quite fighty. A prowess of 15 is not too bad at all. That is very good. What's Tabletop Warriors? What's that? Um, is that one of our 
skills or something i don't quite know what that is okay i don't know what that is but uh okay fine we've got that we like to play some tabletop games from time to time do you know what why not good for you so in terms of our focus i think we'll go for the strategy focus i do like that another plus three marshall is no bad thing so that will get him up to 22 yes we've got 19 now so up to 22 marshall that will be very good. Authority focus is okay. Not so bothered about the dread gain or that kind of stuff. Don't really want to be overly scary. Chivalry focus is also quite nice. I like the prowess and the advantage. I mean, attraction opinion also goes up by 10. I don't think we need that because, you know, we've got quite a lot of kids. Clearly, we don't need that at all. But, uh, but yeah, I do like the strategy. Let's go for that, shall we? Plus three, Marshall. That means we should get some more levies. Because the higher the martial skill, the more levies you have available to you. Let's have a quick look. So what do we got? One, three, four, three. So if we go into here and then pick strategy focus, our martial should be up to 22. But how are our levies looking? Um, okay, maybe we need to move time on a day or so. Hang on, let's just shuffle time on a tiny bit. 1,451. So we got over 100 more people. Um, and there's a wonderful sort of little pop-up thing with some very pretty art. Look at that. That is very nice. Um, the Iberian struggle. The Iberian peninsula is in turmoil. A conflict born of its storied past. Outsiders cover the land and the great Muslim and Christian powers seek to sway its people. But those who live and die on its soil will ultimately determine its fate. I will not let slip my vision for my homeland. By Allah, House Al Yaliki will weather the storm and see my will fulfilled. Okay, and there we go. We are one of the involved participants in this Iberian struggle. And there we go. There's a whole kind of struggle mechanic set up. We shall look at that momentarily. There's other things to do first. But uh, yeah, here we go. Take hold of fate. All very exciting indeed. Right, there we go. Um, so there are other things that we do need to get sorted. Because, you know, we want to make sure that people are looking after the children. They've got wards and we need to get a court physician and all that kind of stuff. So let's just go and do all kind of the admin stuff. And then we'll come back and do something very, very important. Oh, this is very good news indeed. Right, we have a very, very good candidate for the court physician job. So we've got ourselves a chappy here who is a renowned physician, which is wonderful. And he's called Sid Ray. So whenever we need to speak to him, we can go, Sid Ray, Sid Ray, da 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 And some of you will have got that weird obscure reference and some of you won't have done, but there you go, if you did, well done. Um, but yeah, let's get you on board. 50 money to get you, so it's quite expensive, but I think it's worth it because you're very, very good. You are a renowned physician, which is wonderful. Your healing skills are well known. Okay, yeah, we'll get you on board, please. And now we do need to, are you appointed already? Yes, there you go you're automatically appointed as court physician, which is wonderful stuff. Now, what is your sort of, what's your competency at that? Can we go and check? Um, yeah, your aptitude is good for that. Okay, that's wonderful. So you're going to be okay at doing the whole sort of doctoring thing. Right, that is very good. So now on to the very, very important thing that we mentioned earlier, which is, of course, hats. Of course it's hats. I noticed that, uh, that Chappie here, Marwan, has changed his hat. I don't quite know why he's got that hat on anymore. Unless, hang on, hang on. Is he, is he one of our, does he think we're a knight or something? I don't know. Why has he got kind of like a fighting hat on? He didn't have that hat on earlier, did he? I'm fairly sure he wasn't wearing that hat. I don't know. Maybe it's a special, you know, a special hat if you get, when you get over 20 Marshall. It arrives in the post or something to congratulate you on your wonderful marshalling skills. I don't know. But whatever the case, let's go and have a look at the wonderful, wonderful new hat. So here we go. Apparently, there's a lot of very kind of tall headwear that we can choose from. So let's go and have a look. Oh, there's a sombrero. There's also... Oh, that's wonderful. I do like that. Oh, that is very good. I mean, it's you know not quite befitting of, of the chappie's position, but it does look very nice. Um, okay, let's go and have... Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's even better. It's got patterns on it. Hang on. Can we just have that now anyway? Okay, right, I like that. Right, let's go and look through the others now. And if we don't find anything that, you know, sort of uh, appeals anymore, at least we're wearing that wonderful, wonderful hat. That's marvellous. Oh, that's what I think he was wearing on the kind of the select screen when we had to pick our character. I'm fairly sure it was that because it had what looked like kind of steps going up and then a pointy bit at the top. That's very exciting. An Andalusian decorated helmet. Okay, I do like that more than the little hat we've got on now. We'll have that. Okay, that looks very nice. Right, hang on, let's go back and have a look for some more because there's loads and loads of different hats and things. So let's see if that's our finest option. Oh, that is wonderful as well. A golden Makuta with a massive diamond. Oh, that is very, very spectacular. Do you know what? I think our wife can have that. Hang on a second. Oh, yes, that is wonderful. That is very good. There you go, wife of ours. You can have a nice new hat as well. You can join in the fancy new hat party. 
Oh, that's very nice as well. It's like a hat with a great big Easter egg on the top. Okay, that's wonderful. I don't think it's quite as good as our kind of pointy hat thing that we've got on now. Although it is very nice. But yeah, I do think that the one we've got on now is better. But yeah, I do like that as well. I do like the fact that you've got an Easter egg on your head. That's quite wonderful. Okay, so no more big, huge hats. I was kind of led to believe that maybe there would be some towering hats available to us. But never mind. However, I do notice that you can put on some spectacles if you would like. That's quite fun. Uh, but you know what? We'll keep a hat like that. However, there are also face items. What is this? Have these always been in the game? Oh, we can wear a pair of glasses if we'd like. Or have an eye patch. Or a blindfold. Or wear a face mask. Or have a head bandage. Now, some of these do appear if your character you know, gets damaged or whatever. If they you know, lose an eye in a fight, they put on an eye patch. If they're kind of disfigured, they put the face mask on. But now we can choose to wear them if we'd like to. Okay, that's very nice. And there's a cloak option as well. Has that always been there? I'm not entirely sure. If it has always been that, I've never noticed it. Oh, there's loads of different cloak type things as well. Hang on, hang on. Can we have a bit? I mean, where are we? We're, it's quite warm where we are. I don't think maybe, maybe we don't need a cloak. Let's put on an adventurer's cloak because we can. Okay, there we go. I like that. I like that. I mean, Chappie is going to be incredibly, incredibly warm given where we are in the world. It's quite warm in this part of the world anyway. And he's wearing what looks like a very thick sort of padded coat type thing and a cloak and a huge hat with a big kind of wrap thing around it but there we go there we go he'll get used to it eventually i'm sure so i think having looked at all the lovely new hats which are clearly the most important and significant part of the entire fate of iberia flavor pack i think let's go and look at the second most important thing that comes from that flavor pack which is of course the struggle mechanic because that is quite important so if we look over here and over here we have a new little icon type thing which is telling us that we are part of the iberian struggle so we are an involved character in the iberian struggle and if we zoom out just a tiny bit and then hover back over that you'll notice that when we hover over it there is a bit of a line appearing the line doesn't appear quite so strong down here but it does kind of appear across the top but that's showing us where this kind of struggle is playing out so any counties or any places that are in that kind of border so effectively going across there and then all the way down here and around that way back to there again. Anywhere within that kind of boundary could be part of the Iberian struggle. And then if you click the struggle icon, you get taken to this screen here, which gives you all the information you need to know about the struggle as it stands right now. So struggles work their way through different phases. And they might go back over the same phases over and over again because, you know, it's a struggle. So maybe go from one phase to the second phase and then you might end up going back to that first phase again. And you might just keep looping around the same phases for a long old time until something gets resolved. But each phase has different effects. So at the moment we're in the opportunity phase. So if we look down here, we get effects for war and culture and faith. And also there's other effects as well. And these are really good. These are very big, powerful things. For example, the war effect, if you're an involved character, and there are different kind of levels of involvement. We'll come to that in a second. If you are an involved character in the Iberian struggle, which we are, you get all these different bonuses. So fabricating claims in the struggle region, so this kind of lit up region here within that border, fabricating claims cost prestige instead of gold. Wars within the struggle region cost less prestige. It unlocks the border raid Casas Belli, unlocks contract assistance interaction, it unlocks bargain fealty interactions, and mercenaries are 30% cheaper to hire. All because we're involved in the Iberian struggle and it's currently in the opportunity phase. I mean, that's an awful lot of stuff. That's a lot of very sort of good fighty effects that we get. There's some culture effects as well. Learning a new language gives you prestige. Granting a title to a local noble gives you prestige. There's faith effects as well. I mean, that middle one there is quite good. Convert faith in county proceeds faster within the struggle region. So you can go and convert faith anywhere within this region and it's going to happen a little bit quicker, which is very handy. So you can go around the place and spread your religion around a bit if you want to. And then over here, other effects... There's just a gigantic list of these. And the interesting thing about this is a lot of these would otherwise require a perk for you to be able to do these things. For example, the Befriend scheme, that's normally a diplomacy perk. But now, because we're an involved character in this struggle, we can all go and do that. We can go make loads of friends at Commission Epics. That's a diplomacy kind of perk thing. But now independent rulers can just commission epics all they like, which is very exciting. Fabricate Hook. That's an intriguey kind of perk thing. Abduct, that's an intrigue perk. So we get all of these exciting things effectively for free just by virtue of living in this part of the world and there being a struggle going on. I mean, some of those are huge. 
you can go and abduct people or demand payments and things. There's a lot of very, very exciting things going on that we just, you know, get to enjoy because we're in this phase and we're part of the struggle. However, we only get those effects when we're in the opportunity phase. When we go to a new phase, which we will because that's how the struggles work, we'll get a whole load of new effects across all these different categories. And it looks like right now we're currently in opportunity. It looks like the Iberian struggle is going to move into a hostility phase or a conciliation phase. They're the next two options. So that is where we're headed. And you'll notice down here underneath the kind of little sort of uh, picture on the banner thing, there's a number out of a thousand. So hostility has one out of a thousand and conciliation has zero out of a thousand. And that's because we have to earn points. We have to earn points toward these different things. So if we want to go down the route of hostility, if we want to go and do some extreme fighting, we have to do these kind of things down here. So if we break a truce with an involved ruler, the hostility thing goes up by 25. If we reveal the secret of an involved ruler, that earns 10 points to hostility. If we become a rival or a nemesis with another involved ruler, we get plus 10 progress to hostility. So yeah, these kind of things all add up and there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot. And also hostility does kind of just tick up on a year by year basis, just naturally anyway. Conciliation has its own set. So you know, release an involved ruler from prison without any request, plus 25 progress. So yeah, there's different things you can do to work toward which kind of phase you would like. I mean, we are quite fighty. We're a bit fighty. We would benefit from all these different hostility kind of bonuses. I mean, there's quite a lot in there. Look at that. There's so much you get. Enemy fatal casualties are up by 50%. Oh my goodness me. We go into hostility and it becomes a bloodbath. Wow. Advantage plus five. Army siege weapon effectiveness is up. Army pursuit is up. Oh my goodness me. Right. So we would definitely want to move down that route. We would want to make sure that the Iberian struggle goes toward hostility because, you know, we're quite fighty. We're good at that and we can make the most of that. So that means, yeah, we do need to look at uh, trying to do some of these things here. There's quite a lot you can do. There are quite a lot of things. I mean, yeah, just constructing a building in a castle holding gives you plus three progress. Killing involved ruler plus five progress. So there's an awful lot to do. But yeah, we want to kind of work toward these to get hostility to tick up to then become the next phase in the struggle. Now, there is something we haven't looked at yet, and that is struggle involvement. So that is kind of how heavily involved you are in the whole Iberian struggle thing. And we can click this and have a little look at what's going on. So up here, we can see that we are involved. There are three different types. There's involved, there's interloper, and there's uninvolved, but we're very much involved. So our realm capital is in the struggle region, our faith is involved in the struggle, and our culture is involved in the struggle. So we're very much kind of, we're very entwined in the whole kind of struggle thing. We're very important and it's affecting everything about our kind of, you know, the way we are and how we live. However, there are other places and other people that aren't so bothered. For example, there's interlopers here. So Duke Bernat II of Gothia, he's an interloper. So he's kind of, he might live in the region, but his faith and or his culture aren't involved with this. So it kind of, you know, he's sort of, you know, poking his nose in going, hey, what's going on? You guys doing that whole struggle fighting thing? Yeah, I'm not bothered. I just live here. I'm not so first. And the same goes for this chappy down here. Again, just somebody who's kind of, you know, maybe living in the area, but isn't quite so bothered in terms of faith and culture. But somebody that is living in the area, has their own capital here, and their faith is involved, and their culture is involved, that means they're fully involved. So yeah, all these faiths and all these cultures are involved in the struggle. So I think if somebody is of a different faith, so let's say, I don't know, somebody moves in who is, I don't know, uh, I don't know, Protestant or something, they move down here, then they're not going to be involved because they just don't really care. So they might well come up as an interloper or they might just be uninvolved. They might just not be in any way bothered by it in whatever shape or form. So there we go. There's different kind of levels of involvement, which is why we see this. So it says down here, break a truce with an involved ruler plus 25 progress. But if you break a truce with an, a, one of these people, one of the interlopers, it doesn't matter. You won't get 25 points toward your hostility phase thing because yeah, they're an interloper and not an involved ruler. So there we go. That's kind of you know, showing us all the different kind of, uh, all the different people involved and how they're involved and all that kind of stuff. But it looks like most people in the struggle region are very heavily involved with it. There's only two people that aren't involved and 66 that are. So most people are quite invested in the whole struggle thing. But there we go. So we're very much involved as well. We're one of those people who it matters to an awful lot. Now, we're quite fighty, aren't we? We do love a bit of a scrap. Marwan's always up for a bit of fisticuffs. And there is a catalyst down here. So the things that kind of contribute to the next phase. There's a catalyst which says, win a war you started against another involved ruler. 
plus three progress. And I mean, you know, we could always have a bit more land, couldn't we? We can always go for a little bit more land. So why don't we go and have a bit of a fight, shall we? I mean, over here, what's this chappy like here? Sheikh Ibrahim, can we have some of your land, please? Because that would be quite nice. Uh, you've only got 700 and 59 people. That is all very sad indeed. So if we go to here, we can declare war against you. And you'll notice that we have two very new kind of Casus Belli things now that come as part of our struggle. Uh, there is a border raid. Now this isn't kind of, it's, it's kind of a bit weird this. You kind of leg it over the border and you do some ransacking of places. You grab a load of gold and then you run away again. So you kind of run in and have a fight and then go home. You gain a load of gold and then that's kind of it. No titles change hands. You just go in and kind of raid the place. It's a little bit like, it's a fancy raid, if you like. It's like pillaging, I suppose. Um, so yeah, you gain gold in proportion to the development of the target county, which will decrease. And then a building may also be destroyed, but no titles change hands. You don't get that place. Or we could do a struggle clash, which means we do get the title. And it only costs 75 prestige. And that's because they're our neighbour. Now, are you part of the struggle? I imagine you are. You're an involved character. So if we go to war with you and then we beat you, we contribute a few little points toward, you know, going toward the, whatever it was, the, the violence, bloodthirsty phase. What was it? The hostility phase. The phase where lots of people are going to get killed because it looks really bloodthirsty. Um, yeah, okay, let's do that, shall we? Let's go and have a bit of a fight with this chap here. So declare war. Yeah, you haven't even got any allies. You've got no friends and you can't hire any mercenaries. I think we can muddle through. So let's do a struggle clash, shall we? So the moment we're just onto that shake in there. Yeah, we'll have that one because it's kind of next to us and that makes sense. Um, yeah, okay, let us declare war on you. Very exciting. Uh, right, let's raise our armies. Um, I don't know, there makes sense, doesn't it? Raise everybody up. What have we actually got? We've got 200 light horsemen, 100 pikemen, six knights, and yeah, just about 1,300, 1,400, sorry, levies. Okay, that's okay, right. So run time on, and um, yeah, we'll just, we'll just march on over here and do this, have a little bit of a fight. There are other fights going on, but there are legious fights, aren't they? which I'm not so bothered about right now. So, um, yeah, somebody's defending against King Alfonso of Astorius. So there's a fight going on there. Oh, crikey. Yeah, that's that's quite a big fight going on. That's a huge big fight. So the claim on Portugal. Okay, so over there is being kind of contested. And then over here, we've got a Frontier District Rebellion. Oh, okay. Who is fighting who? So you, uh, you're the defender. Who's attacking you? Chappie over there. Oh, okay, fine. I mean, we don't need to get involved unless we get called in. We can do this little fight here instead. Right, their people have been raised and they're running away. So if we just go over here, hang on, hang on. Is it worth having a fight with them? Because I'm not entirely sure. Do we even have, have we got siege weapons yet? Do we have siege weapons in the year 867? I've got no idea. Um, hang on, innovations, tribal. So we're right at the very start of the whole sort of research tree. No, we haven't got... We haven't got um, siege weapons. Um, are we are we in charge of this? Yes, we're the culture head of the Andalusian culture. Can we research? Can we research siege weapons, please? Expected to be discovered in about fifty three years. <laughs> okay, right. Sieges might take a long time. Uh, perhaps we'll chase these guys down. Let's chase them over there. Oh no, we're going to no, don't do that. We're going to take um, we're going to take attrition. Don't do that. It's fine. Stay here and do some sieging. It's fine. Nine months. Nine months to siege that place down. Oh my goodness me, that's going to take an awfully long time. Okay, right, settle in and like bring some rocks to lob at the walls or something. We might be here for a long, long time. Okay, so here is a new thing. So this chappy here has noticed that we're having a fight and he's come along and said, you know what, if you want me to join in, I will join in. And then if his war contribution at the end of the war is at least 100, we give him 100 gold. If not, he kind of just joins in and does some fighting. And then when it's finished, he doesn't get anything if his war contribution isn't 100, which could be quite handy. But I think we're OK on our own at the moment. It's going quite well. If slowly, I mean, what are we on now? Eight months, my goodness me. <laughs> it's all very slow. Um, and yeah, the enemy are kind of just wandering around down here. But yeah, that is a kind of new thing. I don't recognise that from before. So that's quite exciting. Um, to my vassal, as an influential emir, it's only fair that you have a voice on my council. Oh, we've been made a marshal. 
Ah, we are our liege's marshal. Hang on a second, hang on. That gives us bonuses, doesn't it? We now get plus three prowess, which is no bad thing, 15% cheaper army gold maintenance, which means that we're making money. Even though our army is raised, we're making cash. Levy size is up by 15%, and we get a further 15% monthly marshal lifestyle experience. So that means, aren't we already on 40? Aren't we getting something like 55% boost or something crazy? 40, uh, 50, 65% boost, I think we're getting now to our martial lifestyle experience. That's an awful lot. We'll pick up many, many useful perks. Um, but yeah, there we go. Sorry, we don't need any help right now. Ah, okay. Uh, oh, okay. It's another person saying, hey, can we join in and you pay me a load of money? No, we're fine. I haven't got a hundred money anyway. So it's lovely that you're coming by and I'm glad you're thinking of us. But uh, but no, the answer is no right now. Sorry. A new opponent. Nothing in this world is certain, especially in times of war. The Bataliors clash, that's us, against the Sheikdom of Yabora has been no different, as this conflict is no longer against Sheikh Ibrahim of Yabora, but my rival Amir Adanis instead. It might be wise to reevaluate the situation. Okay, something has happened here. What's going on? My goal is still the same, or this is no longer the best course of action. Hang on a minute, hang on. Something has changed over there. Hang on, has he, has he eaten that place? Has he kind of vassalized that person? I suspect so. Who are you? You're a vassal. Yeah, he's vassalized. So Chappie, who is our rival, who does have on a very good hat, he has vassalized the guy that we were fighting, so now we're at war with him, kind of, you know, by virtue of him now owning that land. Oh, and he's got about one and a half thousand people, and we've got 1,600, but he has no allies. Um, are you involved? Yep, you're involved in the struggle as well. Um, do you know what? My goal is still the same, particularly if we're now fighting against our rival. That's okay. We can have a fight against them. We like fighting rivals. They're annoying. Um, who is in charge of the army? Is it us? Look at that, a commander advantage of 25. That is not too shabby at all. Um, okay, right, so their troops are kind of... I don't know where they're going. They're heading down here somewhere. But yeah, very soon we will... I say very soon. In three months' time, we will have that place nice and sieged. Um, yeah, okay, run time on nice and quick. We do want to win that war as well, because we do want to see the... Um, we do want to see our kind of things ticking up here. But uh, I suspect they're going to go for our capital, aren't they? They're going to go for there. They're going to try and siege that place. However, I think we can go in. So if we siege there, there we go. So what we want, only plus 19%. Oh my goodness, right. So if we run around here, because I think there's a big kind of river thing there. There's a crossing down here. But if we run around here, we can have a fight with them. We're on our own turf. So we should be okay. I'd like to think we can win. Plus 18, plus 7. It's, oh, it's close. It's very, very close is this fight. There's not many people left on either side. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> It's going down to the wire. It's going down to the wire. I think we might just get it, but it's not going to be a comprehensive win. Look at that four to 34. Right, he's saying, hey, you can have my troops. I will decline this time round. I think that's going to be it. I thought, hang on, unpause time. That might help. Um, yeah, they're down to five, one. We've only got 79 people left on the battlefield, however. I don't know how glorious a victory that was supposed to have been. Oh, dearie me. Okay. <laughs> um, right. Can we? Can we move that to there? Can we raise? Have we not got any levies left that we could raise? Possibly. Not entirely sure. No, I don't think we have. Um, okay, right. So where do we go next? Where is very badly defended? That's a fort level of three. That's... Oh, no. We might have to go... We might have to go there. Or, no, that's fort level of three as well. We'll go just there. It's fine. We'll head to just there. If we siege that place, that I imagine will get us over the war score. And then we can win a war. And then we can see what's that, what that's done to the whole sort of struggle thing. I mean, at the moment, uh, hostility is... I uh, decline that, Craggy. Hostility is winning. That's on six. Conciliation is on zero. Nobody's interested in conciliation. Everybody is about, you know, stabby, stabby, hitty, hitty, killy, killy stuff. Okay, our liege wants to educate our child. Okay, that's possibly okay. Who's going to teach them? Um, Abdulazim. Okay, are you good? Uh, I mean, you could be better. But if we say no, we're going to annoy our liege. And he doesn't like us very much anyway, for some reason. So I kind of feel like we should say yes. It's okay, that's fine. Yeah, we'll do that. And yet yeah, you want to send your troops in. It's fine. Now they're trying to unseige that place. That's going to take six months. We're going to take seven months. 
So we could do with some siege events coming along to make that quicker. Because otherwise we'd have to see... Ah! They're running away. They're going away. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Somebody's joined in the war. Can you please stop joining in the war of the people? <laughs> no, that's that's not fair. No, you, you've made that all one colour. Right, hang on. We want somebody to come in and offer to have a fight now. Unless... Look at that. That is ticking up. They're going to have to do something about this very, very quickly indeed. 600 people down here. But that's ticking up. 95, 96. If we can just hold on. If we can take this, or even just, like, win another fight, possibly 97%, because we have the war target, it's ticking up 98%. I think we've got it. I think we have this under our control. 100%. And there we go. Da -da -da -da. Wonderful. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, the, a lot of it came from a big fight. But, uh, yeah, okay. So, if we do this, and look at that, it's telling us that it's a struggle clash, because, you know, we're part of the struggle. Enforce those demands. And there we go. We're going to seize all that territory. And now we have another extra bit of land, which we do need to give to somebody. We do need to give that to somebody. Because, yeah, we've got that at the moment and we can't control it because it's too many uh, too many holdings for us. OK, so disband the armies because we're no longer having a direct fight. You guys can just clear off. You guys can go home. Stop, stop posing with your swords. You may leave now unless you're coming in for like a cup of tea or something. And then you're most welcome. OK, no, not one for tea. OK, bye bye. And now we can see over here on the struggle screen that we've contributed to the hostility score. Look at that. We've won a war that we started against another involved ruler plus three progress. And that's happened only once. So we're the only one to have won a war against another involved ruler as of yet. Um, a few people have used hooks, which is, I suppose, OK. Uh, somebody's acquired a claim on a title. And of course, yeah, time is passing. So that's ticking up OK. Still nothing on conciliation. Nobody interested in doing anything conciliatory at all. Everyone's after the you know, the great big kind of fighty stuff. OK, yep, yeah, that's fine. That's what we want as well. There's quite a few new ways to interact with people as well. The only thing is, I'm not entirely sure where these come from. Are they part of the castle sort of general update that everybody who's got Crusader Kings 3 will get? Or are they part of the Fate of Iberia flavour pack? I'm not entirely sure. I would guess that they're part of the kind of castle update because they don't seem kind of intrinsically linked to the whole kind of Fate of Iberia struggle thing. Um, but yeah, you can purchase a truce now, which is quite exciting. I like the idea of that. So if you look around and you see somebody who might be getting a little bit powerful, you might be looking thinking, do you know what? In you know 10 or so years, they're going to be really, really strong. You can spend a bit of gold and then buy a preemptive truce with them. So then if they do come and attack, you can just go, ah, no, look, I've got this truce. I kept it over there in a cupboard for ages. Now I'm going to deploy it. There you go, truce time. And you can kind of, you know, have yourself a bit of a truce, kind of, you know, in the bank, as it were, which is quite nice. I like that. You can invite people to activities. So if you're having a hunt or a feast or whatever, you can bring other people in. Uh, you can challenge people to board games, which is very exciting. And you can foment revolt. So you can go to another realm and you can start, you know, sowing the seeds of disharmony, which all sounds very exciting. However, this chappy here, let's challenge him to a board game. He's one of our neighbours. He's sort of OK with us. He's sort of OK. So why don't we challenge him to a board game? Because I've got no idea what this is going to do. Let's have a look. So they're going to play chess. OK, and you can do a friendly game. You can wager some fame or you can wager some money. OK, so he's OK for playing a friendly game. Um, fame, he doesn't want to wage that at all. And money, 44% chance he might accept. Do you know what? Why don't we just give it a go? I mean, the worst he can say is no. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's try and let's try and win 20 money from him, shall we? Because that's quite a lot of money at the minute. Um, yeah, let's challenge you to a board game. And we do need to we do need to sort out that holding, don't we? Hang on, where was it? Hang on a minute, come out of that. Um, that one there, Elvas. Um, hang on, is there a thing in here? Is there a thing in here where, or is it over there somewhere? There was something about, about, I know, I know it was over here, wasn't it? It was one of these things. Granting a title to a local noble provides prestige. I mean, we could just give it to a local noble. There you go, local noble. You enjoyed that. Um, yeah, let's see. Is there anything else we can do down here that might help give us some hostility points? Do you know, I don't think there is. I think that's OK. We'll just give it to a local noble and we can pick up some prestige for that. That's absolutely fine. So if we grant that to a local noble, uh, yeah, we should get a bit of prestige. We got a lot of prestige from that. Wow. Oh, oh. That contributes toward the conciliation phase. Oh, I've just helped. I've just helped the other phase. Oh, look, it's it's off the mark. Oh, okay, 
Right, I didn't see that. I didn't kind of think about that. But yeah, there we go. Oh, do you know what? I, I kind of feel okay about that. I feel okay about that. We've helped out a little bit with the conciliation phase, which was looking a little bit kind of sad. It was lagging behind, but there we go. Okay, right. So now if we move time on, how does the game of chess happen then? What goes on here? We don't actually have to play chess, do we? Oh no, we've picked up some stress. He said no. Boo, Prince Almundir. Okay, would anybody else like to play chess? Um, would you? Um, oh no, you're you're at war. Fair, and oh, that's fair. What about you? Uh, you're you're at war. Okay, there's quite a lot of war happening. Would anybody like to play chess? Oh no, no. Oh, hang on a minute. Challenge to board game unavailable until eight seven. We've got to wait five years <laughs> to play another game of chess. Oh, that's all very unfortunate. Okay, how about over here then? We don't like this chap. Here's our nemesis. Why don't we? Um, oh, ferment revolt. At least one county has a negative popular opinion. Oh, that's what it must do. That's what Ferment Revolt must do. It must, uh, yes, it must uh, make a, a place have a negative opinion of them, which makes it harder to then manage the locals. Oh, okay. Oh, that's fine. He's already in trouble. That's okay. I'm not bothered about that. Yep. Okay. Right. Fine. Let's just, uh, let's tick time on and see what happens. Oh, okay. Right. This could be quite interesting. Let's see how this kind of plays out. So there is a new faction now. There is a new dissolution faction, which is part of the castle update, I believe. And so our rival over here so the chappy over there who we don't like our neighbor has created a dissolution faction against sultan muhammad who i imagine yeah must be his liege so he's the guy that runs all of that so he's got quite a lot of land he's got an awful lot of sort of you know, vassals and land under his control and everything else but he only does hold himself three titles he's got a kingdom title and two county titles so his main thing is his kingdom title which he has to kind of keep hold of. But the dissolution faction, if we go and look at that and that just there, um, a dissolution faction destroys the realm of their liege. So effectively what happens is that title ceases to exist. So Chappie here will go from being a king to just owning two counties because that title will be, you know, just destroyed. It will be null and void and it will go away. So all of his current vassals will become, is that what it says? All faction members become independent and yeah, the liege loses their primary title. I mean, that would plunge this whole area into chaos. That would be all sorts of terrible. Do you know what? I like the sound of it. Look at that. He doesn't like us anyway. He doesn't like us very much. How about we join? Why don't we join that and see if we can have some fun with this? I've never seen a dissolution faction before and it might make our rival like us a bit more. He does look evil, doesn't he? He looks very evil. <laughs> if we were going to have a rival, it would be him. He looks very grumpy. Um, yeah, let's join. Let's join this because that could be quite fun, couldn't it? We'll have a go at that. We're now the leader. Oh, oh, okay. I don't want to be the leader, but hang on. Can we, we can send an ultimatum in eight months time. So we've got more military power than our liege. We could do with other people joining, however. Can somebody else join, please? Uh, cannot be forced to join, bother. Okay, never mind, never mind. But there we go. That's something exciting to kind of bear in mind, isn't it? Okay, well, we'll see what happens with that. It might be, well, we've got eight months until something happens. So, uh, yeah, we'll hang around for a while just to see what happens and if he loses his title. And then if the whole kind of place plunges into chaos. Because if he's not in charge, that's going to make a lot of people independent. There's going to be a lot of fighting and all sorts going on. Oh, look at that. We can pick up this little county over here and it's going to be no trouble at all. They've only got 390 soldiers, no allies. Yeah, let's have a struggle clash. That gets us points toward the whole sort of, you know, the violent kind of, uh, the violent fighty phase as well. Oh no, Chappie's joined the fight. Uh, him. Our, our troublesome rival neighbours joined the fight. I mean, we're not interested. Somebody else is going to war with them for that place. We're just going to hang around here for a bit. But what's he going to do? I don't know what he's going to do. Oh no, they've wandered off. They're, hang on, can we make the most of that? Can we go in and kind of pick up where they left off with the whole siege thing? Oh no, I don't want to go in while they're there because we will fight them. Um, hang on. Well, now we can go in and we get a new perk as well. Okay, engineered for destruction. Naval speed up and siege weapon effectiveness up by 40%. We don't know what siege weapons are. We're not quite got that far. Hit and run, retreat losses, heavy infantry damage. Or that's just a load of boost. We have got some light cavalry. Why don't we have that? Let's take that and make our cavalry slightly more effective. Um, and then, yeah, we'll go here. We'll have a fight against our rival which we will hopefully win. Um, no, this, it's not looking good. It's not looking... Oh, your liege lost their war with Emir Yusuf. Okay, Iberian struggle. Catalyst triggered. Ah, 
It's been triggered by a mere use of. Win a war you started against another involved ruler. Okay, so the hostility phase has picked up another three catalyst points. I mean, it's still not really getting there. It's only on 22 out of a thousand. But there we go. We're getting there slowly but surely. I think we might lose this. I think this might go their way. I don't quite know what... Oh, they've got loads of men-at-arms. They've got loads of proper actual troops, whereas we haven't. Yeah, we just got battered on the battlefield there. I mean, yeah, I didn't realise that was going to happen there. I didn't realise that other people were going to come in. Yeah, they must have some... Um, they must have some good troops and possibly some good knights as well. Uh, right, we're just going to go over here and look a bit sad at the fact that we didn't just win that war. That was unfortunate. Okay, we'll just we'll head back to the capital. It'll be fun. We'll head back to there and we'll chill out there for a couple of months, get some more people on board and then go and have another fight. I'm sure it'll be fine. One thing we didn't look at actually was how to end the struggle because the struggle can end. It can be a sort of, you know, it can be completed. Um, there are various ending decisions. However, we're nowhere near any of this right now. We're nowhere near getting these. Uh, but yeah, there's three types that we can do. So we can do either um, Battalio's Dominance. So that is where we are. So we become dominant. So that needs all sorts of things. But look at that. If you do that, the dynasty gets 10,000 renown. But you need an awful lot of stuff. You need to be independent. It has to be hostile. You need to hold and complete control at least two de jure kingdoms. It, yeah, there's a lot of demands on that. Although it is well worth going for. Um, the status quo where everyone kind of just goes, do you know what? It, let's just, let's just uh, yeah, accept that we're all going to be different. There's quite a lot of things going on there. Or we can have detente. I think you might pronounce that. Um, but yeah, that one is kind of like, we just sort of embrace everybody and go, do you know what? Everyone's equal here. Let's stop fighting. Let's just enjoy where we are in the world. Isn't it nice around here? Um, and then yes, if you do that, you can create the Empire of Hispania. But yeah, this one seems to be slightly easier to do. You can become an independent, well, you need to be an independent ruler. It's got to be in the conciliation phase. You've got to be exalted among men. You've got to have one uh, de jure kingdom and other, all other independent involved rulers have an alliance with you. Okay, that's quite tricky. That's quite hard to do. But again, if you do that, you get 10,000 renown. That is very, very good. But yeah, we're nowhere near getting any of that right now. Absolutely a bajillion miles away. Okay, there's a bit of a siege race going on. So we've made our way back over here to try and siege this place. Three months. They're over here. Five months. So we've just kind of got ahead of them. Oh, and there's more stuff going on. There's another three points toward the hostility phase. We'll decline that offer. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think we'll get this before they siege our place. And I think that will be it. When we siege this, that's going to be it. It's going to be sorted. Let's move time on a little bit quicker. Yeah, look, the siege events are so slow. They're so painfully slow. But there you go. They've only got one place. So that's kind of it. So yes, we shall have that. We'll enforce those demands. Thank you very much. And another three points toward the hostility phase. Look at that. It's creeping up very nicely indeed. Um, yeah, okay, right. Disband the armies. Everybody stand down. Right, we do possibly have some prisoners. Oh no, they all got let go. They all got let go. Ooh. Has that always been there? Has there always been a nice background to the prison? I don't recall. I don't recall there being a kind of background like that. And they have added a lot of artwork stuff. There's a load of art and there's some you know, tiny changes to the UI. They've got like, little little windows now down here and such like. But um, yeah, I don't think there's been a prison background on there. Okay, never mind. Right, there we go. Right, so we've won a war. That's exciting. And uh, we can go and have a chat with our liege if we'd like to. But, I mean, given that we're in a faction against him to try and destroy his title, I think that might be a little bit of a silly thing to do. So, um, yeah, now maybe let's just wait and uh, see what happens with that kind of faction thing. Um, okay, one of our sons has come of age. Uh, hang on a minute. Which one? Hang on. Go to there. Which one are you? Right, so you are 16. Okay, you're the oldest one. Okay. Uh, and you have got only a two-star uh, diplomacy education trait. So not brilliant, if I am honest. Not wonderful. You're much better at stewardship. And for some reason, you seem to be a knight as well, even though you can't do any fighting. Yeah, maybe let's make sure that the kids aren't doing the fighting. I think it might be worth getting another unit of men at arms. Let's get somebody else in. I mean, we've got what? We've got pikemen and we've got light horsemen. Why don't we get some light footmen? Or possibly some bowmen, actually. They're quite cheap and they're very, very good. Yeah, let's get some bowmen in, shall we? Let's get some bowmen. They're only 55 minutes. Yeah, we'll grab 100 bowmen, please. Just to make our, um, just to make our men-at-arms a little bit more effective. 
Okay, I think this might be one of the new events they've put in because they have added a whole load of new events, sort of ones that are standalone and ones that are linked to the struggle. I think this is kind of a more standalone event. It might be one that we get because we're a marshal, sort of following a marshal lifestyle. Um, there have been clashes between the Mowaladi and the Mozarabic population in the Sheikdom of Placentia. Maybe you pronounce it like that, I don't know. Let us use this opportunity, my steward Abbas suggests, to recruit affordable soldiers from among the Mowaladi militias. If they continue their training in their home county, that isn't so bad either. We might actually encourage that. Uh, okay, so do I let Placentia burn in order to enlist these violent fanatics? Okay, let us spread some hatred discreetly. Okay, we gain fanatical recruits. So levy reinforcement rate of the same faith goes up by 50%, but there is a high chance that we get hate monger. Oh no, that? No, 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 no. We don't want to do that. Oh no! Holding taxes down, development growth down, popular opinion, no. Or try and ease the tension. So there is a diplomacy challenge. Um, oh no, they might get riots and murders anyway, but there is a 44% chance that we have tolerance gospel. We pick that up. So yeah, different faith opinion goes up. That could be quite handy. And tensions ease plus 10 popular opinion. Let's give, let's give that a go. There is only a 44% chance of success. It might not work. Here we go, fingers crossed. And it failed. Okay, right. So wherever Placentia is, that Placentia, that there, that's going to have a load of rights. Okay, hang on a second. Hang on. Hang on. How are we doing for control in certain places? Let's send you over there to try and sort out control because it's a little bit kind of unruly over there. And our player heir is unmarried, but I think we found a perfect wife for him. Look at that. Zahida there has a wonderful, wonderful set of stats. She's the same religion. She's the same culture. And she is a genius. Yes, please. Absolutely. Can we sort out that marriage? Because that might mean we have some very, very smart kids. Wonderful. There you go. Happy wedding day, you two. The Omen. Oh, this doesn't sound very good, does it? A local mystic insisted on seeing me. And upon being brought into my presence, he started wailing. And is that blood on his hands? The signs, the signs are not in your favour, my lord. I spilled the intestines of a hen, and the blood showed me your future. It's dark and full of death. Okay, possibly a crazy person, possibly someone who can see into the future. I don't quite know why you need the intestines of a hen to do that, but okay, no, can't you get crystal ball? It's a bit, bit sort of less gruesome, isn't it? Um, well, that's ominous. Okay, so we've got had bad omen for 10 years, a moderate health penalty. Oh, dearie me. Uh, however... We are feeling fine. We're feeling fine because we are a blade master, which makes us very hardy indeed. And we've just picked up attentive care as well from our wife. So now we've got a massive disease resistance sort of boost. OK, that's very nice. That's very handy. Um, the walls of Medellin. The delegation from Medellin slowly files out of my private chambers. Our long meeting finally over. The petitioners beg for money to repair the crumbling walls of the holding and have invoked my lordly duty to help them. I drum my fingers on the table, pondering whether to send them funds. Good fortifications are hideously expensive. Of course, if the walls are crumbling anyway, then I could always divert their existing stipend to more personal matters. Okay, so I have a duty to care for my subjects. 50 money, but the fort level does go up. And popular opinion goes up. It's only 50 money, 159. Um, we can do this ourselves. There's a 52% chance that uh, we completely bodge that but it's free. Um, we do pick up quite a bit of stress. All the money is for me. We just get some gold. I mean, you're, you're ambitious. Maybe you try and do it yourself. I'm not kind of role playing this as much as we do the lovely people dynasty, because this is more of a look at a look at the DLC and the new things. But, uh, but you know what? Yeah, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. And we've botched it. Oh, dear me. Right. We've tried to rebuild the walls. We didn't know what to do. And it's all gone horribly wrong. OK, sorry, everybody. Messed that one up. I think it might be time for our dissolution faction to press some demands, because look at that, we've now got 10 people on board. There's a lot of very, very angry people, very unhappy with their liege. Um, so yeah, let's press the demands. We can do this at any time. The discontent is quite high. Okay, so it's going to send an ultimatum to our boss. If he accepts, all of the faction's demands will be fulfilled. If he does not accept, the faction will start a civil war against him. OK, so here we go. Let's see what happens. Are we going to plunge Iberia into civil war? Let's go and have a look. Um, no, we're now independent. Oh, he, he bowed down. He said yes. OK, so now he's just he's just a shit. We're more powerful than him now. In fact, we are more powerful than him because we're in a mirror. 
because we own a duchy, whereas he's just a sheikh. He's just got a just got a county. Oh my goodness me! Right, so that kingdom title is gone, and we are independent. Okay, so we have lost some benefits because, of course, we're no longer on his council, which is a bit of a shame. But now we're independent. Oh, hang on, hang on. That means we can do an epic. That means we can commission an epic. Although, as we've seen, they're really expensive. So maybe we won't do that. Oh, there you go. That is how a dissolution faction works. Um, that worked very easily. Surprisingly so. Uh, okay, wonderful. There we go. Let's enjoy our independence. Let's go down the tea shop and buy some tea and cake. Okay, I think the former king has come to us and said, hello, can we please have a truce? Can we please have a 10-year truce? Do you know what? Yeah, why not? Absolutely. You're going to give me 50 gold for that? Yes, please. Thank you very much. So there we go. We now have a truce with, yeah, I think it was him, wasn't it? Was it him? I think it was down here somewhere, wasn't it? Oh, no, it was him. It was him. It's not the former king, but, you know, nearby. But, okay, so we now have a truce with that chappy there. He's given us more money than he actually had. Oh, there we go. And a massive load of catalysts have just triggered. So there must have been a huge fight going on or something. Or a claim. It's all about claims on titles. Oh, my goodness me. And they've won a war as well. Okay. Right, so things are kicking off over there. That's all fine. Let's just uh, clear all those down. How are we doing with this over here? I mean, given we've been playing for a good long time, we've not even got up to 100 hostility. And in fact, conciliation has taken the lead. So now, if, you know, if it were to go over right now, we'd go into a conciliation phase rather than a hostility phase, which is quite intriguing. Um, okay, do you know what? Yeah, we'll run time on a bit more. Let's see if we can just... I don't know. It, it looks like this is going to take a long time. It looks like this is going to take hundreds and hundreds of years to get kind of, you know, to the next phase of the struggle, which yeah, makes sense because it's an ongoing, big, long, kind of difficult, tricky thing. It's not going to happen every sort of five years. It's you know, a big sort of ongoing kind of process with you know, tensions and such, such like bubbling under the surface and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's not going to happen immediately. But let's see if we can get one of these over 100 before we wrap things up today. What could we possibly do? Break a truce? We could break a truce. That's 25 points right there. Reveal secrets and become a rival or a nemesis. Uh, usurp a title. I don't think we can do any of that kind of stuff. Um, convert an involved ruler or county. Convert in terms of faith, possibly. Let's have a go at that, shall we? Why not? Let's see. Can we convert some faith? Yeah, let's work on this place over here. Let's convert that there because it's not currently following our faith. It's got this uh, sort of this Christian, this evil Christian uh, Mozarabism faith over there. So, yeah, we don't like that at all. So let's try and convert that, shall we, for something to do? OK, Sheikh Mohammed, who I think is the former king, um, he's bought with me a poem or something like that. I think it might be Striving Amid Strife. OK, so he's dedicated a little kind of it's either a song or a poem to us. The Mace's Song. Though conflict brings wrath to all someday, a hero lives to enter the fray. His subjects prove grateful, for if they are not, they'll soon see on which side they have fought. <laughs> okay, so far I've kept my thoughts myself, but the buzz has grown too dramatic to ignore for much longer. Okay, so he's brought this over. I don't quite know how I feel about it. Okay, so 74% chance that it's, you know, it's lauded and everyone likes it. 25% chance that it's mocked. Or, oh, Mohammed, I can see this is truly heartfelt. Um, he gained some opinion of us. Because uh, we're grateful. No, he's grateful that we liked his poem and we gained 75 prestige. Let's go for that. Let's not have a risk. Let's just go for that, please. There we go. I thought you'd be really angry with us. I thought you would hate us because I'm fairly sure that you you were the king. And we, re we led the whole rebellion against you. I thought you might be a little bit grumpier with us than that. But no, clearly not. You're absolutely fine. Now, one thing we could do right now, we could declare war on the guy that is the former king. That might be quite fun. I mean, yeah, it will kind of you know, come back on us a bit. We'll lose some. What happens if you break a truce? You lose some stuff, don't you? But we could go and do a border raid because that's quite exciting. We've not done a border raid yet. And this place here is really, really well developed. It's a very well-developed place. So we gain gold in proportion to the development of the target county. So it's got a development of 20. So I don't know if we go and bring back 20 gold or it's like a multiple of 20 or whatever. And a building might also be destroyed. Um, however, yeah, we do need to break a truce. Um, but I think, hang on, if we look at that, we spend 250 prestige. We lose one level of fame. I mean, that's OK, isn't it? But when we do that, I think if we break a truce, it counts toward hostility, doesn't it? And um, where is it? Break a truce with an involved ruler. 
plus 25 progress. Why don't we go and do that? And we'll go and do a raid and see how that works as well, because we've not done one of those before. And that sounds like a fun thing to do. Also, there's a thing there. What's that? What is that? The Great Mosque of Cordoba. Oh, oh no, hang on, hang on. It might be worth having that for ourselves. That's quite a good, that's quite a good place to have. Hang on, can we go and grab that? Can we do a, a struggle clash on that? Um, so it's all our troops against him and his allies. So we've got a little bit more than him. Plus we could buy in some mercenaries if we'd like to. Do you know what? Let's do this. Let's break a truce because yeah, it goes toward our whole struggle thing. Um, yeah, okay. There we go. We've broken a truce. Aren't we terrible? Um, and then if we look here, um, broke a truce with an involved ruler. Hang on. Why isn't that kicked in? Why isn't that kicked in? We just broke a truce for some points. Um, our dishonor comes at a cost. Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, right. Get everybody over here. Can we raise everybody there, please? Yeah, I want to go and capture this place. Because that's very, very good. Okay, yep, in we go. Let's do a spot of fighting. Oh, okay, they seem to have brought in quite a number of other people. Where did they come from? They must have come in from this direction or something. Uh, yeah, we might lose this fight here. Possibly got slightly ambitious with that. But, uh, but yeah, it looks like we're going to lose. Unless we have some sort of fantastic super defence. I mean, our advantage is going our way. But they've just got too many people. Okay, right, that didn't work at all well. And there's 600 people down here as well. Okay, right, that that didn't work. That's not worked at all. Uh, have we got any allies? I don't think we've got any allies, have we? Okay, never mind, never mind. Um, okay, that's unfortunate. We'll, we'll work on that. We'll come back and work on this. It's all fine. We're on minus 50% already. Our troops are going to go away for a bit. But uh, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll come back and do some more fighting when we're a little bit more prepared. Okay, they seem to have 2,318 people. They must have got some mercenaries on board or something. How have they achieved that number? Did you get mercenaries? Let's have a look. Yeah, you bought 697 mercenaries, which did actually sort of turn the tide in your favour, which is unfortunate. Um, okay, how about then? We also do the same. Let's have a look. Let's grab some mercenaries. And they're a bit cheaper, aren't they? Because of the current phase we're in. Mercenaries, I think, are they 30% cheaper? Let's have a look. Yeah, mercenary higher cost, 30% cheaper, because that's one of the perks you get for being in the opportunity phase. Okay, that's very exciting. Okay, right, so let's go to here and let's grab some mercenaries. Um, tw what? 21 gold? Why are the mercenaries so absolutely horrendously dirt cheap? Okay, we shall have these because there's 2,200 of them for 60 gold. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, right, here we are. Hello, we're going to come in and have a fight with you. We might possibly win now. Um, no, we're okay without your assistance. I think we'll be okay. Um, oh, no. Have we died? Oh, we've, di oh, we've died. <laughs> okay, we are dead. As I'm enjoying dinner and a full cup of violet charbra, I suddenly feel a curious sensation in my throat. It doesn't take long before I'm clawing at my neck trying to breathe, to scream to get any air at all past my swollen and bleeding throat. As my consciousness fades, I see that there's blood and skin under my nails. I'm going to have to wash that off. How unseemly. I've been murdered. Oh my goodness me. We got murdered. Oh, that's not very good. Well, there you go. We got murdered. We're carrying on as our son, who I suspect might have possibly done the murder. Um, let's have a look. Um, hooks and secrets. Um, hang on. I think we need to move it forward one day, possibly, to sort of recalculate things. There we go. Um, no. No. Okay, it wasn't us then. We didn't do the murder because we would have known, wouldn't we? It would have come up under there. Um, okay, right. So, uh, carry on. Oh, hang on a minute. Let's do all the stuff. Hang on. Yeah, diplomacy. Yeah, I know foreign affairs. That's always good. Let's just kind of do all the stuff. I just want to go and do this fighting over here. And I'd like to do a little raid on a place as well. But um, okay, let's sort out the council. Yeah, you can join in. And a spy master... You can join in as well. Be better than the last one because we got murdered. After winning another game of chess against myself, I can't help but think that perhaps my towering intellect could improve this game somewhat. But what change would make the most sense? Do you have a towering intellect? I mean, you're quite smart. I wouldn't say it's towering. Um, okay, the king is clearly too weak. We get 150 prestige. Or the bishop should be stronger. So we get 100 piety and we get clergy opinion up by five. I mean, we are lacking in prestige. So, yeah, let's just go for that, please. Just try and top our prestige up a bit. Um, can we get down here and have a fight with them? Why would we lose decisively? We've got so many more people. Um, okay, do you know what? Let's just go... Hang on, let's hang around over here then for a bit. Hang around over there and we'll see what they do. 
Are they going to do anything? You want to join in? No, we're okay. Oh, hang on a minute. We've not got a general. That's why. That's why they would. Um, that's why they would. Uh, they would win. I imagine. So now, yeah, we're going to win this fight now because I've actually put somebody in charge. Okay. Yep. In we go. Let's do some fighting. Fight to fight, and plus tens, and the superior numbers are working very well. And there we go. Right. So, deadity dead, and we'll go over here. It's going to take another half a year to siege this place. Okay, right, settle in, everybody. It looks like they are trying to throw people at us to kind of, you know, disturb our siege progress, but it's not going to work, is it? We're just going to keep killing you. Please stop throwing yourselves at us. I don't feel great about it. And the siege is almost done, and there we go. It's at 100%. Yes, we shall have that. Thank you very much indeed. Um, right, we do only have three counties under our control so yeah now we get this one which is very very good because that's got the fancy big kind of you know, duchy building special building thing in so um yeah let's just top things back up let's get our troops all topped up we seem to have got an awful lot of oh no because we've got a load of um a load of mercenaries haven't we i was thinking why have we got that many troops but i uh, know a lot of it is mercenaries so when all these troops top back up we should be able to get a proper true picture of what we're actually picking up per month which is looking pretty good. Okay, who's that? Oh, somebody in a prison. Yeah, okay, we'll let them out. It's fine. Okay, so with that place captured, let's see if we can do a bit of a sort of a raid on a place. Let's do one of those sort of weird little gold grab type things. Um, where does have a good level of development? Let's go and have a look. Development. I mean, that place is looking pretty good. What about, what about here? What's that? Development of 11. Oh, it's 14 over there. It's 14. Didn't we sign a truce with him? Hang on, what's that? That's 11. Do you know what? We'll go down here. We'll go down here. We'll go and raid this place here because it shouldn't be too tricky by the look of it. So let um, me yeah, go back to there. Um, hello, let's declare war on you. Let's do a border raid then. Let's see how this works. Oh no, we haven't got enough. We haven't got enough uh, prestige. Hang on a second. Hang on. Let's go and host a, like a hunt. Call a hunt. There we go. This is going to be fun. 67 money. But uh, yeah, we can get some prestige from this. And then we can go and do some raiding. Okay, so there we go. Hunt complete. Turns out that one of our brothers is a big old murderer. There you go. Who knew? Took a hunt to expose it. Right, now let's go over here then and have a bit of a fight with you. So yeah, let's do a border raid. 75 prestige. And let's just see how this works. So yeah, we're going to gain gold in proportion to the development of the target county. So it's got a development of 11 right now. So let's see what happens. So, okay, so we've declared war. Grab the sort of uh, muster point. Put that there. Have a bit of a fight. Right, there you go. We've got many people. I don't think you stand much of a chance. So if we go and do this and then go in and just have a bit of a fight. Yeah, this is, this is really painfully one-sided. Right, and then seven months just to get that done. And then we'll see what happens. We shall see what money we get from this. Is it worth doing all this kind of looting stuff? Or is it just a big old waste of time? I do not know. But we have just picked up another 50 gold from our spouse's average stewardship skill. Well, that's very nice. Thank you. Okay, a matter of days. And there we go. Right, so we've completed this. So we've won the whole battle. It's all good. The war is over. So what happens with this? So if we enforce our demands, what do we get? So we get 50 gold. Is that all? Is that all we get from that? Okay, so that wasn't that high in terms of its development because, yeah, we probably spent that much on having our troops raised. So we're really only sort of getting that back. We have affected their control level and they have got recently looted. Okay. Okay, that's quite exciting. Um, and a random building. Oh, no. Did it get destroyed? I don't know if they lost the building or not. Um, okay, so that is a little bit... It's a little bit undramatic, that. That's a little bit unexciting. I suppose if you're in a very well-developed area, you could go and do quite a lot of raiding and pick up quite a bit of money. But uh, yeah, that's not overly exciting, is it? However, we did contribute to uh, the hostility phase with another three points because, of course, that was another war won. Oh, that's quite good. So our younger brother has asked if we would like to play a game of chess. And I was thinking of wrapping things up for now by just going and playing a game of chess against somebody because the guy that we asked a lot earlier, he said no, didn't he? He said absolutely not. And then we didn't play any chess and we had to wait quite a long time for some obscure reason. So here we go. Let's have a game of chess against our brother. So here's what our younger brother so we've got 18, 19, 20, and he's 16. So how old are we? We're 20 years old. Crikey, we're still quite young to be in charge. Okay, so we're going to play chess against our younger brother. It looks like we might be playing it just for fun, possibly. Just a friendly game. Although it does say if your opponent wins the wager. But I'm not entirely sure what we're playing for. Are we playing for money? 
or are we playing for prestige or whatever? I don't know. Do you know what? We'll say yes. Oh, it's got a fancy new kind of screeny windowy thing. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed is already waiting to begin our little chess match. Sat waiting with a competitive grimace writ large across his features. Uh, we're neck and neck, though neither of us is even close to victory. I know you've still got some trick up your sleeve, scows my opponent. Nobody can possibly be this easy to beat. Okay, showing off. Right, so what do we do? Hang on, what are we good at? Um... Okay, we're best at stewardship, which I don't think is overly helpful when it comes to playing chess. Uh, okay, so a strong sword arm is a strong die arm. Okay, so in chess, martial is countered by intrigue. Oh, it's... hang on. That's intrigue and that's learning. Intrigue is countered by learning. Learning is countered by martial. It's, it's rock, paper, scissors. It's rock, paper, scissors. So what's he going to go for? Right, he's very good at martial. So he's likely to pick Marshall. So what counts as Marshall? Intrigue. Okay, are we good at intrigue? No, we're terrible at intrigue. <laughs> oh dear. Um, okay, okay. Possibly, pos I mean, do we just try it? It's an intrigue challenge and we are absolutely, utterly woeful at it. I mean, do we just go for Marshall? He might not go for Marshall, my type brother. Let's just have a go at that show. We'll have a go at that. Um, our match marches on, Mohammed continuing, with several well-executed adaptive strategies. We're neck and neck, though neither of us is even close to victory. I wish matches of coin were as easy as playing chess, marks from my opponent. I'd be swimming in silver. Okay, so what do we go for now? I mean, do we go for the intrigue challenge? To In chess, intrigue is counter... Yeah, do we go for that? Because he's probably going to go for Marshall again, isn't he? I know we're terrible at intrigue. But do we try it? I mean, look, that is our worst thing. That's awful. Um, or do we go for a bit of learning? We're quite good at learning. Do you know what? Let's go for learning. Let's do that. Okay, the match marches on. Mohammed continuing with an obvious trap. Naturally, my techniques cunningly foil my opponent neck and neck. Um, if you keep winning, I'm going to vomit literal blood all over this board, you cheating knave. Okay, right. He's not very happy. I think we go for learning again. Let's go for learning again and see how we do. Um, okay, it's it's going on. We've uh, cunningly foiled his pathetic gambit. Uh, you planned this, didn't you? All but snarls my opponent. Plan to humiliate me with a rigged game. You asked. You asked if we wanted to play chess. We were quite happy just having a cup of tea. Um, let's go for learning again because it seems to be doing well. Yay! <laughs> okay. Okay, right, so we've won our chess game with a roar of triumph. Oh, and look, we are jubilant. Oh, look, and it looks like he's trod on a bit of Lego. Um, with a roar of triumph, I surge to my feet, scattering pieces everywhere. This game of chess is mine. Another fine victory on my indisputable rise toward the role of king of games. Oh, that's wonderful. A desolate Mohammed remains seated, hands on his haunches, trying to comprehend where he went wrong. Okay, so we can say good game. Um, I win the match against Mohammed due to sudden death. Okay. Does chess have sudden death? How does it feel to lose? We become rivals. Or I'd love to play again sometimes. Oh, okay. So we have an 84% chance that he agrees that it's actually a good game. He gains some opinion of us and we might become his friend. Oh, okay. Let's go for that, shall we? And no, that went wrong. He makes an obscene gesture and leaves. Okay, that didn't work at all well. <laughs> But you know what? We won a game of chess and that's quite fun. Okay, we just contributed another 10 points toward the conciliation phase. So how are things looking over here? Where would we be going right now? It's very close. It's very close indeed. Hostility, 179. Conciliation, 163. So only what's that? Math with pen. 16 points between them. That is very, very close, given that, you know, people are going to be wanting different things. People are going to want the benefits from hostility and conciliation. They're going to kind of, you know, want to try and get those sort of benefits in. It's quite interesting that, yeah, they're relatively close. I thought one would take a very, very clear leap, but no, there we go. But I think with that done, we will finish things up for now. I think we've had a very good look at the whole struggle system. I mean, yeah, we've not got to, yeah, we've not moved on to the next phase because it looks like that's going to take... A long, long, long time. We've been playing for a little while, not you know, not ages. Started on 867. So we've been playing for what a number of what's that? For seven years we've been playing. And it's 179, and we've already gone through one ruler. But yeah, I think we get the idea. So it would go to hostility, and then we get some new effects. Then we use those effects to do what we need to do. And then yeah, I guess the next phase might be conciliation or opportunity, possibly. And then we move toward those, picking the effects we'd like. We do all the kind of catalyst things. And then eventually, 
as time goes on, we might be able to get ourselves into a position where we could actually do some sort of you know, end condition type thing to finish this struggle and to put it to bed and stop the people of Iberia fighting and you know, struggling and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that is a long, long, long way off. There's an awful lot of things you need to do to get that. That's like a proper sort of full game. That's a full game to work toward that. But, uh, but you know what? I like that. I like the fact there is something else going on in the background. So you're sort of competing for land and territory and all that kind of stuff anyway. You're sort of you're doing what you would do normally. But there's kind of this little sort of undercurrent, this little sort of you know, quietly sort of ticking up thing, which is going to change things around a bit. And you have to be a bit careful because people have got other agendas now. Maybe somebody really, really wants all the effects from the hostility phase. So they're going around the place and doing all these kind of things. They're breaking truces and revealing secrets and all that kind of stuff. All this kind of nonsense is going to be going on um, just so they can get up to hostility so they can get all the fancy hostility bonuses. Maybe that's what they're doing. So, you know, there's kind of other agendas at work now with the whole sort of struggle thing, which I do quite like. And you know, it works out quite well as well. All these things are quite good. They're all sort of you know, achievable things. They're not completely impossible. They're all achievable goals. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, conciliation... We've certainly got less things complete for conciliation than in hostility. Look at that, as eight wars started, 24 claims made on titles. My goodness me. I mean, yeah, I think if we were to carry on, it would end up with hostility. I think that's just kind of the natural one that would win. But there we go. There we go. There is the struggle mechanic. And do you know what? I like it. I like it. Adds another layer, which makes things a little bit kind of interesting. Keeps you on your toes. And of course, as well as the struggle itself, we did get to see a few other bits and bobs. We got to see the different struggle Casus Belli, so the little struggle clashes and the border raids. We got to see how the whole board game thing plays out. We got to see the dissolution faction actually at work, which is very good. I do like that. I mean, that makes being in charge, that makes being a king or an emperor a little bit scarier, knowing that a faction can come along and destroy that title and then just you know plunge everything into kind of chaos. That is a little bit scary. Because there is a risk when you do get to sort of emperor status and you've got everything sorted and you've got all the kind of, you've got primogeniture kind of unlocked and all that. It can be a little bit, sort of a little bit settled. There's not really any great threat to your empire titles or your kingdom titles. But yeah, that is very good. I do like the dissolution factions. I'm glad we, uh, I'm glad we saw that. And I'm glad we took part as well. We led that. We made that happen. We made all these independent people, which is very exciting. So yeah, we've had a good look at stuff and I like it. I like the uh, I like the flavor pack. I like the new kind of updates. It's very, very good indeed. So there we go. Hopefully you have enjoyed this little look at things in Crusader King 3. If you have enjoyed this, then please do leave a like. That would be most marvelous indeed. And if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other Crusader Kings 3 that we do play here in the Geek Cupboard. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. The city of Cupboard, it can be full of geeks, very loyal geeks to me. It's this sort of stripy hill. That's interesting. Oh, a stripy mountain. Sorry, I, I downgraded you to a hill. Just really irritate the Norwegians. Everyone had gold. People were lying on beds of gold. They were eating gold. They were trying to wash their hair with gold. There was gold literally everywhere in our empire. <laughs>